What's up guys and welcome back once again to the reviews. Today I've got a little sort of test video I want to do on a product that's really, really cheap and might might interest you. Um, interest in me because basically, although I've got a decent motherboard with four M.2s on it, B650E, um, if I use the third slot, then it drops my graphics card down to by eight. Um, so basically I wanted to keep that. Um, so I looked into basically getting an expansion card and with this motherboard, I would have I would have liked to get sort of the Asus one or I think Gigabyte do one, uh, the Aorus one, uh, where you can put four M.2s in it. However, because of the PCI lean, PCIe lanes on my motherboard, it doesn't allow me to use more than one drive in one of those anyway, unless I put it in the top slot, which obviously is reserved for my graphics card. Um, so long story short, I decided to get one that just takes one. Um, and this might, like I say, might be something that interests you if you've gone for a sort of a, not a top end uh, motherboard, even in some of the X670E boards, I believe don't even have um, by 16 lanes underneath as well, so to allow you to up to four M.2s in an expansion card. Um, so this might interest you. This is straight from AliExpress. I found one on there because it was really, really cheap. I thought I'd give it a go. This is a company called J or J. I don't know G. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but as you can see, that's the brand there. And this is a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe uh, sort of riser card, uh, which allows you to put uh, an extra M.2 into your system by utilizing one of your expansion slots, which you probably won't be using unless you've got things like capture cards and sound cards and stuff like that in. So what we're gonna do today is have a quick look at this. Uh, also, this has ARGB on it. They do one, this is the picture without one. Um, but the one I've got is the ARGB version, so add a little bit of bling to the system as well. Um, so we'll have a quick look at this, um, see what it looks like, and then we'll install it and we'll test it and see whether it's actually any good. Um, it costs about £10 in, uh, in British money, um, so probably about $12 or something like that in US. Um, so absolutely dirt cheap and could be a great answer to those that want to add an M.2. So let's have a look. So like I say, this is the JE uh, Volley Star Series PCIe 4.0 NVMe Extend. Uh, so it's a like I say, an adapter to put an M.2 onto your onto your motherboard without, if you haven't already got one there, or you've ran out or whatever, like anything like that. Um, it's 120 mil by 66 by 18, which if that is if that bothers anybody. Um, so let's open this and have a quick look at what we get. Um, so straight away you get some screws, which will be I assume to put tie the M.2 into it. You get a low profile PCIe bracket, which is a nice little inclusion if you're using it in a uh, smaller system, uh, that kind of thing, a RTX system or anything, and you've, you've got limited space. Um, there's a thumb screw there, which I assume would be to tie the PCI br bracket down to your um, to your case. And then this is the actual piece of kit here. It's actually quite heavy, so it, obviously it's got a big, thick, chunky heat sink on the front of it, which is good. It actually feels really, really good quality, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, unfortunately, it's white on the back, which is going to look maybe a little bit silly. In my case, as everyone else is black. Um, however, you could probably easily cover that with a bit of vinyl or something like that if you needed to. Um, so there is that. Um, then we get what looks like some sort of thermal pads, all different colours and different sizes. Not really sure what that's all about, why it's not just one piece to go on the NVMe. Uh, it's may maybe you're supposed to put it on each individual chip, which would make sense, but why there's basically the different thicknesses, I don't know why you need different thicknesses. Again, that probably depends on which NVMe you're using. I've got no instructions whatsoever because it's all in Chinese, um, so I'm flying blind a little bit here. Yeah, you get a little screwdriver as well to undo it, so let's open it up and have a look. So just remove the two screws out the back here by the looks of things and then it comes away. And as you can see, that heatsink is absolutely massive um, for an NVMe. Um, so there should be ample cooling for a, a Gen 4 SSD. Like I say, it's a big chunk of, I assume, aluminium. Um, it feels like aluminium. Um, so it should do a decent job of cooling your uh, NVMe. And then obviously this is your uh, where your drive goes. You've got all your RGB LEDs up here, um, which will shine through on the top of there. Um, to give you a bit of RGB. Like I say, it's just a single NVMe. So let's get one installed. I'm gonna be using the Western Digital Black SN770 one terabyte, which I believe is up to 5,000 megabytes per second. Um, so 
should be decent. Um, well, obviously, we'll see if I get the full speeds out of it. Would be nice to test on a faster drive because obviously, um, PCIe Gen 4 can go up to like 7,000. I have got some of those drives up there, like my main operating system drives and things like that, so I don't really want to uh, um, remove them. And as you can see from it, it takes the different sizes 22, 30, 42, 60, and 80. I've obviously mine's an 80. Don't need to put any additional brackets in it because there's one already in there, but you do get a uh, additional piece to put further down if you need to do and then obviously like I say you do get screws with it um, you get three of them why I don't know just I assume in case you lose one and then I'm going to pop that tiny little screw tell you what I'm going to do although they do give it a screwdriver which is magnetic so actually that shouldn't be a problem tighten that in there and there we go we've got the uh, SSD installed nice and easy single screw and that's it ready to go now I have no idea what what size thermal pads to use. So just from looking at it, it looks like the blue ones are the ones I need. Um, basically I'll just sandwich them in between there and see if they make contact with it and they just about do. Um, although the contact doesn't look the best. Um, so what we'll do is we'll stick some of these on and then uh, we'll, we'll reinstall the, we'll reinstall the uh, cooler. So we've got a couple of heat pads on there, just put it on the chips. Um, I assume I won't need it anywhere else. There's no chips on the back of this. Um, so I'll just put it over the main chips here, uh, the controller, and obviously the, the memory chip. Uh, we'll, and obviously we'll see we'll see what the thermals are like, hopefully, and we'll be able to tell you whether this is actually any good and worth buying. So let's uh, install that cooler back on. So I figured out why it comes with extra screws. It's because when the uh, when he sent it to you, it's only got two installed on the back to keep that on, and the rest are to put in the in this spare holes that are there to screw it down. And obviously the other ones for attaching the drive. Uh, so that's it. It's all installed in there. Let's get it in the system and uh, let's see what it uh, how it performs. Right. So we've got the uh, JE. Uh, M.2 extender installed and as you can see it's at the bottom there with a green light on. Um, now the motherboard or anything doesn't recognise it as an addressable strip or anything like that so you can't change it via the motherboard and I can't see any other way of changing it so unfortunately it's stuck on green. I don't know why. Normally they get stuck on uh, rainbow mode but this one is stuck on green. Um, so it's probably not going to be staying in my system unless I decide um, I find a way out of changing that. Um, I don't know. Um, so I've not even bolted it in, it's just plugged It's just plugged into the motherboard for now, I've not bolted it into the case. Um, but as you can see, it looks alright in terms of the, the light uniformity, looks quite cool. Um, it would be nice if I could change it and have it match the rest of the system. Um, but, oh well, it is, like I say, it is only a £10 uh, add-on. Um, so let's go back up top and have a quick look at the uh, performance of it and see if it actually gives me Gen 4 performance of the drive I'm using. Right, so just running a crystal... Crystal disk mark test um, to see if it keeps up to the speeds it's meant to. Um, and obviously I've got hardware info up to see the temperature of the drive, which is just up here. Um, let me just mark those, I can mark them all. Uh, just up here, um, we've got the temperatures of the drive. Um, and straight off the bat, uh, in terms of read, it is rated up to 5150, so we're getting 5050, um, 50, well, 5060. So it is a little bit down on that, but that's potentially of a margin error, maybe a little bit under what it should be. Um, not sure why that would be. Um, that's on obviously sequential randoms, 4,600, uh, 4, and obviously your lower Q depths are different there as well. Um, it'll just wait for it to finish. It'll finish it in a minute, and we'll see the exact results at the end. But in terms of write speed, it is rated at 4,900, and it's getting pretty much bang on that, 4,899. Um, so, and at random 4717, so absolutely fantastic. Um, doing a really good job. And then you can see the temperatures up here. Drive temperature, 36 degrees is the maximum it's got to. Uh, temperature 2, 56 degrees is the maximum it's got to again. And temperature 3, 34 degrees. So all those temperature sensors are reading uh, pretty much normal, to be honest with you. Um, as you can see, the solid dime one that I've got using um, down here, which is for my... Uh, operating system is running hotter than that and that's just under the motherboard's CP uh, heatsink um, so therefore these temperatures are absolutely fine that heatsink's doing a very good job actually um, only 36 degrees of 34 and then 56 at the maximum hotspot temperature on there um, for temperature 2 whichever uh, probably the controller to be fair is probably where that is um, so yeah, it's doing an absolutely fantastic job. So, uh, and then obviously now with test is finished. So as you can see, uh, let's just go through it again. 5,050 for 
uh, sequential read, 4900 for sequential write. Um, sequential with a lower Q depth is 4.6 and 4.7 respectively and then a randoms are 9.16987 which is pretty much normal uh, and a random 4K 73 and 243 so it's keeping up to the drive specification to be honest with you it is a little bit low on the sequential reads um, don't think that's too much of an issue you're not going to notice that anyway um, and whether it, this drive was performing that way in the first place I'm not sure um, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much there to be honest with you and like I say temperatures are doing a fantastic job So that cooler on it actually works really well um, So let's go back to have a quick talk about this So there we have the JEJEJE, -E -E, I don't know how you pronounce it um, M.2 extender to add basically an extra M.2 to your system with ARGB although um, Sorry RGB although for some reason I can't get it to change um, I'll look into that maybe and put it in the comments if I find out how to do it um, so yeah, performing really well. Like I say, it's for about ten pounds here uh, that I got off from Man Express. So ten pounds uh, UK uh, will probably be twelve to fifteen US dollars, something like that. Absolute bargain if you need to add a Gen Four M.2 to your system and you haven't got enough available M.2 slots and you want to just bang one in there. Like I say, they do one without RGB as well if you want to get around the headache I'm having with this. Um, so yeah, it performs absolutely fantastic. Temperatures are way down. Um, even after the test has stopped, they've not come down much, so obviously the, the cooler's doing its its job enough to make them not even climb, really, during testing. So uh, that's quite impressive, to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, absolutely absolutely fantastic job. Um, if you're looking for a cheap upgrade to get an extra storage drive in here, um, because obviously M.2s are so cheap at the moment, they're actually cheaper than SATA drives normally. Um, so I understand that you might not want to buy a SATA drive, you'd be like, why am I buying something that's slower? Um, for more money. Um, so if you want to get an M.2 in here and you haven't got the PCIe lanes to do more than one, then great little addition. Uh, maybe just go for the non-RGB version. I think it's a little bit cheaper as well. Um, and then you've got that extra slot there. So that's it, guys. Um, hope you find this video interesting. And if you were looking for something like this, hopefully this helps. Um, like I say, go and buy it. I'll try and put the link in the description below for you to AliExpress. Um, I don't know where else you can buy them from. Obviously, you can buy other brands as well. I think like Sabrin or Sabrin do their own um, and then other companies do them as well um, so yeah guys thanks for watching uh, if you enjoyed this uh, give it a thumbs up if you didn't do it give it a thumbs down leave me in the comments and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching goodbye